welcome again to the second tutorial please like share subscribe to this channel please so in the last tutorial i explained what everything does so from now on i'll be taking each of these steps one after the other till the end so here i'll be starting with the instruction instruction fetch subcircuit so we'll see how the inside what the instruction fetch looks like let's see then so this is what the instruction fetch looks like internally the value code for this whole project can be found on my site uh, i'll probably give the code or the link to the to where you get it from open core project.org so but for now this is the so i hope we are familiar with with logic sim so if i select this if stage search and fetch let me go to it so this is what it looks like i will zoom in actually so let, let me run it so you see how it works So let me show you the program counter. Sorry. So what I just did, I just this is more like the program counter, and this is the instruction itself. So so this is what the this is what the instruction fetch looks like. So I will explain what all of them do. Now, first of all, this is the clock. I've replaced it with this, the, the main running clock. So this is the reset button to reset, just to reset this. We said this register here. The, this register stores the program counter. The program counter. So now this is the instruction fetch. If the instruction fetch is not on, the instruction will not be working. So now it's currently off until it's turned on. That is when the instruction will, will be able to work. Now and this branch taking is coming from the instruction decode unit. After the instruction decode unit, I've decoded an instruction and there's a need to jump so it's going to give the offset where to jump to this is what you call the branch offset i double m and branch taking is an indication to the instruction fetch that it should jump so you can see what this branch taking does is it controls this multiplexer that chooses between incrementing the program counter or using the normal program counter minus one so that is what this branch taking does so whenever the branch taking signal is on it selects this one if it's off it selects this one to this multiplexer here so what this multiplexer does this is just a, a counter it keeps decrementing by adding it with all one if you add in all one you are actually decrementing or uh, you can either be decrementing or incrementing it either way that's what it means to be a program counter it's counting one two three or it's counting three two one zero and down so that is what this branch taking taking signal does with the branch offset to it tells where where to jump to and they're all coming from the instruction decode, decoder so after the instruction has been decoded in a bit to get the next instruction it tells it tells the instruction fetch subunit whether to fetch the next instruction or to jump to a particular offset so the instruction fetch enable is always on and this signal comes from the hazard detection unit when everything is okay the instruction fetch is always on fetching instructions steadily but when once there is an hazard or an error, it goes off till everything is corrected. Then this is a normal clock and reset unit. 
So I'll just turn I'll just turn on the instruction fetch enable so you, you see how this runs. So here you can see the program counter. It keeps incrementing. Okay, it's actually decrementing, not incrementing. And the input of the program counter goes to this instruction memory. Now, this instruction memory is a sub subunit. I'll show you what, what it contains. So once the program counter goes into the instruction unit, it brings out the instruction. So this instruction memory is like a ROM. You know where it's like when, when you are playing a game, a video game, then you have to put the disk. So either disk you are putting in is, is actually a ROM, which has permanent memory of the particular game you are you are trying to play so whenever you put inside that particular disk the program counter is moving from one memory incrementing or decrementing from one memory register to the other and for each each register it gets to it brings out the particular instruction content in it so let me let's let me show you the content what this instruction memory is. So, so this is it here. It takes nothing but the program counter. Once the program counter goes in here, it shows that it brings out the instruction. So it's just a ROM. So a ROM means storage. So it's more like your video game card. You know, like your card game, which game you want to play. So whichever disk you put, it stores a memory. So the program counter is more like the address selecting, selecting which part of the disk it wants to get. But normally it's either incrementing up or counting down. So it's running one after the other, selecting every single memory within the run, unless there is a need to jump. So and if there's a need to jump, it can increment the program counter to the particular place it wants to jump to. So this is what the instruction memory looks, looks like. And it's being controlled by the this fetch instruction fetch unit. So that is it. The program counter continuously going into the instruction memory and getting the instruction out. So this instruction is going to the instruction decode unit where it's going to be decoded. So the Velo code can be found on my site or the link to the open core where you get it. Please kindly like and subscribe to this unit, to this, my tutorials. So, sorry, wait. So that is exactly what, what you get here. That is exactly what goes on at this instruction set. So next tutorial, I'll be talking about this instruction decode unit. Thank you.